Hello everyone and welcome back to Disco Elysium. This is episode 17. Last time we started exploring the church, had a bit of an encounter with a crab man who was not a crab, but maybe a man, but kind of like a spider, but almost like a flickering flame. Who knows? Uh, he has now retreated into the rafters and has given us permission for the Ravers to move in and create their nightclub. You know what? Massive fan of Crab Man for that. Big props. Uh, we were using the radio computer before the owner came in and kicked us off and is now making sure that we haven't ruined anything. Uh, so we're going to continue where we left off. Uh, we've got an interesting uh, shattered glass pane uh, that we can... Uh, that we can interact with and also uh, speak to uh, speak to the woman here So we're gonna start with the glass. I think and then we'll we'll check in so I'm, I'm excited um, To to get into this episode today and get some more information uh, About the church and help out the ravers. I'm gonna start this episode off with cracking a cold one Because it's uh, it's time to that was an explosive one too. cracking a cold one uh, with vigor and passion. In white, silver, and apricot fields, the young mother of humanism stands above you. A crack runs across her body. She is impossibly tall, oval-faced and sad. A dark and radiant majesty. A dark and radiant majesty. The young mother of humanism. This is her innocence, right. Dolores Day. This is Dolores Day. Awesome. That's a that is some striking imagery, right? Like holding a glowing pair of lungs. How interesting. Cradled in her arms are a pair of glowing lungs, clearly visible from underneath her flowing dress. Ooh, you should kneel. You should kneel. I wonder if that is... This is interesting because I don't think we've gotten into any... We've gotten into a lot of Harry's political side, but there hasn't been... Uh, there hasn't been any part of Harry that has really gone into the religious side of the world as uh, outside of just learning about it. So this is interesting what Harry would would do in this situation where he's like, leave me alone. Or he just like chooses not to kneel or to kneel. I think at Harry's point in his life, uh, it's a very interesting how you could choose to, um, it's very interesting how you could choose to get in Harry's head here about what he would be doing in a situation like this, uh, at, his, at this quite, uh, tumultuous period in his, in his life. I'm going to go with no. Cold wind seeps in from the crack in the glass. Snowdrifts cover the floorboards at your feet. Above, you feel her multicolored eyes on you, inspecting you. Inspecting you. Judging you. As if under a microscope. Look up. No. And no, I am not your bug. Utter defiance. I'll look up. I want to analyze this thing. The woman looks down at you, standing there. She towers among her followers. Architects, laymen, courtiers. There is a sad smile on her lips and a glint in her green-blue eye. Of what? Compassion? Remorse? She acknowledges the passing of someone who is still alive. You. <laughs> no, she doesn't care about you. She only cares about her shiny sovereign's orb and her silk robes and get into the aerodrome on time to leave. This is great because this is, while this is a half-light response, it feels very, like, conceptualized because you are analyzing uh, a piece of art here, essentially. What is the glint in her green-blue eye? Compassion? Remorse? Morning, or it's not possible to live. She acknowledges the passing of someone who is still alive. I'm going to go with morning. As that terrible word passes through your mind, the lieutenant draws an X-shaped cross from shoulder to shoulder. Ah, uh, he's doing that. 
We only have the option to do the same. Interesting. Your fingertips touch your chest four times as you stand in the apricot-colored light of the window. Above you, the woman still smiles, a distant smile, sundered by the crack in the glass. Wow. So an encyclopedia check, and we've read The Greatest Innocence, so it's, there's a very high chance uh, to succeed, which is great. Reconstruct the cracked glass is not a check that I expected. Visual calculus. Okay. If anything, I would have expected maybe some interfacing because of uh, the nature of the surface. So we can go straight away with this is Dolores Day, or how did I know this is the mother of humanism? Despite the damage you've done to yourself, the title appears lodged in your hippocampus. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. The innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state. Perhaps the most famous human being ever to have lived. No amount of Commodore Red can wipe her sad smile from your brain thing. It has survived the deluge and haunts you still. And will haunt you forever as it haunts all men. Sad smile from my brain thing. Okay, we've got a bunch of questions. What exactly is an innocence? I've read a book, but it was fuzzy. The highest category of historic individual. An embodiment of the world spirit. A ruler? More. An innocence is elected to office by the founding party. A precedent that has taken place a mere six times in the entirety of history. The legal system of the Real Belt is built to accommodate an ascetic rule should it coincide with our time. An innocence is infallible. The decisions made by one are not decisions. They are inevitabilities. What would have happened anyway? Only accelerated, packed into decades instead of centuries. An innocence is a continuous compressed event, a sacred human being. It is an honor and a glory to live when one is in office. Is one in office now? No, we are alone. Okay. When did she rule? 300 years ago, in the wake of the discovery of this Isola, the Insulindian, by explorers from the continent of Muindi. She is, among other things, the innocence of inter travel and the connected world. Okay, then. That's interesting. That's really bizarre. Um, what else do I know about her? Many things. You know she was a woman of the court, the wife of an influential Marchese, and eventually the principal advisor to Irene La Navigateur, Queen of Seren, modern-day Sir Laclay. Also, that she was gorgeous beyond beauty. Gorgeous beyond beauty. Draped in ancient sadness. Are you sure you want to remember this bit of historic trivia? Standing under a long slender form like this? Dwarfed? Yes! Big bummer! Boring history! Gotta keep it light, man! Keep it moving! <laughs> Get fucked up instead! Horrific necktie, shush. I need you to chill. Um, big bummer, boring history. Are you sure you want to remember this bit? I'm going to say, where is this, where is this coming from? The past. It's a silo of sadness, fermenting. You should keep away. Fuck this pain, Bratan! It's unhealthy! No, you must know. Yeah, conceptualization coming in clutch. I want to know. Sometimes it's good to air things out, even if it hurts in the moment. What else? Was she smart? Terribly. Women of the court were expected to play both contract bridge and chess sufficiently well to prove an interesting challenge to a man. A simple grasp in matters of philosophy, theology, and science was encouraged. She was, by all means, a kept woman. She made the most of her position in the Antidelorean court, a court visited by the most prominent thinkers and artists of the day. In secret, she was becoming the era's preeminent philosopher of the state, a scalpel, a piercing gaze. She was an almost preternaturally magnetic and intelligent individual. To her contemporaries, she appeared out of time, 
a messenger from the future of the species. We all fell in love with her, head over heels. Even before she was declared of innocence, her influence was tremendous. Wow, Dolores Day is something else. How come? It was on her advice that Irene Le Navigateur sponsored a number of voyages into the Pale. A costly, often tragic endeavor, ultimately vindicated by the discovery of the new, new world. The piece of reality you're standing on. She was crowned two years after the first expedition returned, setting in motion what is widely considered the greatest era in history. The DeLorean era. It's a great car. Wow. Wow, indeed. When her innocence was declared and the queen she had advised for years fell on her knees before her, she was so overcome with emotion that her lungs started glowing in her chest. Bystanders reported golden filaments lighting the already sunlit chamber around her, clearly visible beneath her dress. That is why the lungs are the symbol of love for the cultures of the real belt. That's so cool. I want more. As did we all. The lands of the Mesk and the Occident and even far away Supramwindi. Altogether, 21 of the 40 Mundial nations of the time immediately accepted Innocentic rule, even before her crowning. Her crowning? In a city called Advesperaskit in Vesper Messina, her homeland, the name of the city means evening comes, but it happened on a winter's morning with the canals frozen and slush falling out of the sky. She was dressed in a white and pearl dress on an emptied out plaza with the crowd far away. Already, her Therias, the secret servicemen of the innocents, were worried about an assassination attempt. She must have been beautiful. Oh yes, she looked like humanity's young mother, a perfect mother, insultingly beautiful. It was as if her face and shoulders and hands were covered in a soft down of underfeathers. You know this well, very well. Midwinter snow was beating the cobblestones around her. A small attaché of officials stood by as her therriers placed a white gold wreath on her head. The crowning was mostly witnessed by secret servicemen. And then what? One of the men in this secret service killed her 22 years later. A young man who had come to suspect that Dolores Day was not entirely human, but something else. What? Something that had walked in our midst, watching us stumble for hundreds, if not thousands of years, until it decided to interfere, interfere in the course of our history. We were supposed to come up with this ourselves. The man was reported to have screamed at the innocents. Dolores Day was shot in the chest with a fouling piece eight times. The man, thought to be insane, said he once touched her and her body had been unnaturally warm, like a furnace, and that sometimes, while on duty, he observed her forgetting to breathe for over ten minutes. She forgot to manually breathe. This inhuman quality was witnessed by many others as well, glowing lungs and all. It is commonly attributed to mass hysteria and religious psychology. I don't even know what to think about that. Was there something terrifying about her? Terrifying is a term too emotionally charged for your semantic memory, or what remains of it. But terrifying, it's a simple word. <coughs> she was bad for humanity, and you shouldn't have started thinking about her. No, there was there something bad about her? I want to know. You already do. Although she is often considered to be the greatest human being to ever live, there was something ominous about Dolores Day, constantly surrounded by her therriers. She was the most socially secluded and least self-aware of all the innocences. Some modern thinkers would consider her a war criminal for the campaigns she waged against the Mesk state. And then there were the resettlement programs. What happened? The Mesk state 
tried to detach itself from inauthentic rule. Parts of the world were experiencing whiplash from accelerating inter-secularism. Her mandatory education programs and mass resettlement of upstream Marguerite were problematic as well. Dissenters were suppressed by a military force she called the Army of Humanity, suggesting those who fight against it are not part of humanity. She adored chess, yes, but also military war games. Dolores Day often holds a tiny tin soldier between her index finger and thumb in icons such as this. She was also blonde, the blondest woman you have ever seen, with green eyes the color of the Pacific, Mare Interregnum. Her hand is in a way where, between the index finger and the th thumb, she would be holding a tiny tin soldier, but it's just like, you know, how you usually see, like, the religious imagery that tends to kind of, like, how they hold their how they hold their hands in particular ways it seems to be kind of like that like cradling a child in your at your breast while you know that kind of that kind of stuff but the imagery is very much like the index finger and the thumb little is known of her marchese husband it's as if he vanished from history after completing his role which was to introduce dolores day to court in conclusion yes there is something lonely paranoid and even terrifying that people seldom mention but feel when they think of her. Mm. This subtle terror is part of her iconography. Lieutenant Yefrater, you've stood there for over five minutes. <laughs> yeah. I actually like that Kim has acknowledged the passing of time while we've been sat here just really taking this one in. What are you thinking of, if I may ask? She's somehow connected to the case. Glowing lungs, that's fucked up. Why did we tolerate this um, bourgeois woman long before we shot her? Just looking around, she's beautiful, she's not human. Yell, war criminal. Wow, okay. She's not human. Okay. He takes his glasses off to clean them, then after a while he says, This church, the coast in general, we shouldn't linger here. This isn't a good place to get lost in. We should conclude our business and move on. It's just like, okay. We have a chance to reconstruct the cracked glass, which is 28% visual calculus. We'll, tr we'll give it a shot in a sec. This is Dolores Day. Yes. I wasn't sure before. But this must be the Dolorean Church of Humanity in Martinez. It's called the Small Pinewood Church in some records. You knew of the place? It's a minor landmark, not easy to find. Most maps misplace it. It was built not long after Revachol's founding, 300 or so years ago, by first-generation settlers. On the coast of an uninhabited archipelago, where only animals had roamed before, in the wild reeds. What else do you know? There used to be seven stiff churches on the coast. Les Setsa, they called them. The Seven Sisters. Only one remains. The rest were burnt in the revolution or used for building materials. We should be respectful here, although the building appears to be deserted. I do not believe we'll find anything connected to the lynching here. Something else, perhaps? He looks at the machinery lying around. Respectful? Is the lieutenant a follower of DeLoreanism? Well, considering what uh, he did to a bit of a, you know. A pang of guilt. The lieutenant is leaving something out. Do you know why it was abandoned? I have a theory, yes. There was a police raid a while back. I heard the place was shut to pieces. Yeah, and that's what uh, Crab Man was telling us about. Who conducted this raid? Well, your station was involved, I hear. Although I can be sure. Fuck. Uh, considering our character has amnesia, I wonder if Harry was also involved, if this, our station was involved. How come the lieutenant isn't sure? Is this confidential information? You're not sure? Three precincts were involved in the raid, and people say Precinct 41 was one of them. Three precincts. I don't remember being here. I guess I could have been here. 
Well, I mean, I don't remember being here, because I don't. I am pretty <coughs> sure it was a clandestine operation. I don't know anything more about it, why it was conducted, or who participated. I try not to pry into extra district matters. Now I'm curious. If I was here, I should find out what I was doing. Proceed. Good luck. You will not get information on a confidential operation from your station secretary just by calling. If you really don't remember, it might be better to keep this one forgotten. I need to dig deep into my memory. It happened a while ago. It's an important to our business in Martinez now. Kim, are you a follower of uh, DeLoreanism? Yes, we all are. Her name, body and rule are synonymous with humanism. The laws we enforce are DeLorean in origin. Hmm. <coughs> hmm. Stroke your chin first. The woman looks by in silence, smiling enigmatically. I didn't think you were spiritual. It's not spiritual. It's constitutional. The DeLorean system does not demand faith. Only accordance. Interesting. All right. Visual calculus. Give me a second, because I believe we have some visually calculative glasses to put on. Um, so it's currently at a plus one. I don't think there would be anything else that would give you a visual calculus plus that isn't glasses. So I think we're okay with that. Aha! Never mind. I take it back. Okay, we got two things that can increase our visual calculus. The mother of humanism stands above you. A precious and complex wax painting on a single pane of glass. We've got enough skill points to also put another point in if we her need. Body, her face oval and sad. Reconstruct the cracked glass. 58%. Yeah. A jigsaw of broken shards falls into place in yeah. front of you. A ghostly reconstruction of the stained glass window. Before it was shattered, there was an older woman beneath the younger one. And a text. A light motif below them both. Wow. There we go. Success. What shattered this mosaic? I assume it would be there would be some form of shattering that took place to get the power wires in here. Unknown. Oh, okay. Was it shattered from the outside or the inside? Can we see if the glass, which direction the glass was broken from? Something during the raid the lieutenant mentioned. Or just hooligans looking for something to break. Who is this older woman? The escutcheon on her throne says, Irene the Navigator. Ah. She is depicted as an older woman wearing thick rimmed eyeglasses, holding a golden rights apfel in one hand and a scepter in the other. This is the queen her innocence day advised. Above, she herself is whole. Okay. Small figures of wise men, common men, worshippers walk up the stairs to stand at her feet. Secret servicemen, thirty years, stand in a row guarding her. It must have taken years to produce this work in all its dizzying detail. The motto, what does it say? Below both women, in luminous black letters. Après la vie, mort. Après la mort, la vie de nouveau. And then, along the left side, après le monde, la gré. Après le gré, le monde de nouveau. After life, death. After death, life again. After the world, the pearl. After the pearl, the world again. Wow. This is the great light motif of humanism, a summary of the effect of the discovery of this Isola, the Insulindian, on human thinking. A tremendous sea change akin to finding life after death. And the password to this computer is after life, death. Lieutenant, this used to say after life, after death, after death. Life again. Life again. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. He knows. This exaltation is common in Dolorean sacralism. In the early years, it was even incorporated as the RCM slogan. No more, however. Why? 
It was deemed subservient to use a strongly moral intern related motto. We already suspected of bootlicking. The sentence was also seen as too feminine. It was a macho thing. <sighs> gotta, gotta, be, gotta, be, gotta be tough. Got, gotta be masculine. Urgh, I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking stupid shit, man. What is the RCM motto now? Justice, union, prudence, and force. Not very feminine. <laughs> uh, justice, union, prudence, and force. Oh, it's boring. You know what isn't boring? After life, death. After death, life again. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. Why is that viewed as feminine? It's so strange. The way the way people perceive things. Very strange. I like this. Puts the fear of God back in the. God damn it! Um, I actually like the other. I like the other one better. So do I. Eh, Kim, a man of taste. Step back. Okay. The mother of humanism towers above you. The mother of humanism does indeed tower above us. But there we go. We reconstructed it. All right. I need to put my conversationalist clothing back on now because we're about to have conversation uh, let me put that back on disco ice blazer um, we've got logic composure perception half light horrific necktie change my glasses back um, encyclopedia empathy I mean I don't know how empathetic we're gonna have to be with this woman but we may need to have we may need to get that encyclopedia going so let's put on the let's put on the glasses um, and let's get logical and let's have a chat what is it Suna the programmer the woman is still hunched over the keyboard gently illuminated by the pairing machine I didn't break anything did I no, you just printed out my personal log and wasted some paper. Uh, hey, are you the lead programmer of uh, Whirl, uh, Untethered by any chance? Yes. Or, no. Not anymore. That project is dead. She doesn't seem surprised to be recognized. Rather sad. Something passes over her face before she straightens her back. Sorry, but who are you? What are you doing here? I am Sona Luukkanen Kilde. The former lead programmer of Fortress Accident and RSA radios. I have over 16 years of programming experience and I'm proficient in both Vox and Orbis languages. If you're not here to hire me, I don't really know how I can help you. Do you want to be a DJ for a nightclub? Did she say over 16 years of experience? She must have started programming when she was still a teenager. That still doesn't answer what she's doing in an abandoned church. <laughs> Have you seen the crab man? Nope. But you know he's around. Yes. He's seen you. And? And? The crab man has seen you. I don't care. I don't care about crab men. <laughs> wow. She really doesn't. Not afraid, this one. Why are there so many machines in this place? I brought them here. These are my machines. Please don't touch anything. Why do you need an antenna? I use the AR-1 as my RAIN Prefect processing unit. RAIN Prefect? That's your radio computer, right? Mm-hmm. And the antenna, it's processing unit? Yes. You really don't know anything about radio computers, do you? She has stopped working now. Um... I know a little. All right. Well... All radio computers perform operations up on air. So in order to gain more processing power, you need to invest in a good antenna. Wait, what's on air? On the front. The unified front of radio waves. Licensed and controlled by Lintel in the East in Cylindic region. Okay, chill, just because I don't know it. It's all around us. That's what on air means. Like love. And the AR-1, it's a good antenna? I guess it is. So far I've been quite satisfied with it. 
Martinez is an unstable region with bad coverage and the operation has been surprisingly stable. But it's not the cheapest one on the market. So I wouldn't recommend it for your regular red tape operations. Fraser 1000 is a foolproof line for civilians. Anyway, you should do some research before you decide to buy anything. Ask around, compare the prices. There are many milieus dedicated to that sort of thing. She liked to tell me this. It calmed her nerves. What are you doing with your radio computer? I'm working. Working on what? Could you... Could you just... Shh. For a moment? Or get to the point. I really need to focus on something. What are those bowls of water over there? They are connected to my rain prefect. Whatever you do, just please don't move them, okay? Thanks. Short and terse. There you have it. Whatever she's using them for, they're hers. Isn't your REM prefect's radio computer made exclusively for the government use? So you do know something about computers. You're right. Prefect is used mostly by the government peeps. And you work for the government? No, I don't. So why do you have it? Because I needed something good for my investigation, and Reim's Civic is widely agreed to be below all standards, so I had to upgrade. Besides, owning a Reim Prefect isn't such a big deal anymore. No, actually, it is kind of a big deal. You don't see Reim Prefects in every police department, for example. How did you get your hands on it? I know a friend of a friend who used to freelance for the Coalition. I was actually aiming for the military grade Reim Rational series, but couldn't find one. Prefect is mainly based on the same technology as Reim Civic, so it's kind of a ripoff. But it does have better compatibility with newer antenna models, so I won't complain. Right, I'll try not to touch anything. Uh, next question. Great. Uh, what are you doing in an abandoned church? You really like those questions, don't you? Um, I'm a police officer. It's my it's my job to ask questions. I'm conducting scientific research here. You can't throw me out. She says, ready to stand her ground. What research? I'm looking for the location of a two millimeter hole in the world. Wait, what? Hmm. Hmm. She's looking for a disruption in the radio waves. That's what her personal log said. A two millimeter hole in the world. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. Is the hole connected to the data loss in your journal? Yes, that's what led me here. But I suspect it might be something a bit more complicated than that. A hole in the world? What does that mean exactly? Exactly. What does it mean? Up to now, it has been impossible to say what it is because it's impossible to measure nothing. What do you think it is? What qualities does nothing have? How do you measure something that does not exist? She's suddenly absorbed in the conversation, waiting for your answer. Easy. You measure it by the world around it. You measure it by collecting data on its surroundings, on that which exists. Exactly. Very true. That's what I've been aiming for, that's why I have those basins. I've tried using hydro-dense deucers to record the silence. To find out where it begins. Huh. Hydro-transducers. So that's what those water basins are. Devices for recording sound through water. But honestly, it's not progressing very well. She grew silent, staring at her circle of basins. It looks like some ancient ritual. But does it have anything to do with necroplasmic life forms? Ghosts in everyday parlance. Does it have anything to do with ghosts? Ghosts? No, I don't think so. I don't believe in ghosts. What about other supernatural entities? I don't believe in them either. What not many know is necroplasma exists. Great. What are we talking about? And why? <laughs> Do you have any idea where this hole might be located? Somewhere underneath those roof beams, I assume. 
She looks up, eyes trying to pierce the pitch black heights above, but without much success. Strange things may flourish in the dark. Why there? There's this place at the back of the church. A place where all audible vibrations seem to decease. I've named it the Swallow. And the higher you go, the less you record. The Pillar of Silence? Are you sure it's not just an architectural quirk? Maybe. But it's oddly close to the physical coordinates of the data loss that led me to this place. This is where the Crab Man lives. I know. You don't think Crab Man might be somehow responsible here? No, I don't. Okay. You said that the research isn't going well, why not? Because it's just trial and error, trying to locate the swallow, the exact point in space. And I don't have a... You know what? It would be really helpful if you could just stop talking and let me work. That's fine, because that's all I wanted to know about the scary 2mm hole in the world. For now. Great. Thanks. Uh, how do you feel about anodic dance music, though? What? I hate it. Okay, well, you're going to have to learn to love it. I bet she hasn't even heard it. Have you even listened to it? Like, actually listened? Yeah. Like, all the time. My tent neighbors don't really ease up with their partying. Do they? <laughs> Maybe I'd have to be on drugs <coughs> to get it, but to a sober mind it just sounds like uninspired rock whipping. No idea what it has to do with either dancing or music. Right, right. But but how do you feel about a club for anodic dance music? This is about those beat freaks in the tent, isn't it? I've got some news for you. It's not a nightclub they want to build here. What do they want to build then? Take a guess, why don't you? A petting zoo. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm still convinced they want to establish a nightclub for anodic dance music. They said it's their dream. I can't believe they got you so easily. Go have another talk with those up-and-coming entrepreneurs, will you? Thanks. Interesting. The plot thickens on the ravers. Good luck. I'm not coming in there. <laughs> okay, right. I'll let you work in peace now. Okay. Tell Andre about Suna's thoughts on the nightclub. Hmm. 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 Okay. Guess we'll find out. That's how church stuff handled. Let's move on. And by move on, I mean continue this train of thought and go and check in with uh, our tent neighbors. I'm glad we can conveniently cross this bridge to get in there. Let's figure this out, shall we? Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? Oh, convinced we're a smart cop actually takes this one down. Logic. Maybe everything isn't quite as you've been told. Take a moment to analyze. All right, hold on a sec. Goodbye, officer. <coughs> Logic! Oh, actually, this is a plus two logic, isn't it? Fuck, that's even with a lot more logic. Anything else that I've got which is logical, I'm gonna put on real quick. We're gonna be the most logical man in the world. Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? Um, let's go with about the church. I checked it out. And? What happened? I talked to the crab man. Oh man! Who is he? What did you think? You were right. He's a true narcomaniac. And the way he climbs, it was terrifying. He gave me this odd lecture on alcoholism before rambling on and on about mother's love. Really? Huh. Interesting. What's he doing in the church? Um, just preaching and praying from the looks of it. No matter. Is he going to be a problem? Yeah, Noid is right. Let's get back to the point. What are we going to do about him? These guys will never catch him. You will never catch him. There's nothing to do. Well, actually, he told me he wouldn't mind the nightclub at all. I don't know, man. Doesn't it feel like a major hindrance to you? A spooky guy climbing around when all the guests are trying to have nice, friendly hyper time. You're just going to have to live with the crab man. 
I guess it's not a massive problem now that I think of it. Yeah! Hardcore! Everyone is welcome! <laughs> Yeah! I just knew he was about to chime in, dude. Yeah! <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I guess we'll figure something out. Okay, but what about the other spooker? The one in Grandma's clothes? Did you see her? <laughs> I was using the mainframe when Sooner, the former lead programmer of Fortress Accident, appeared. A programmer? That's odd. What was she like? Did you ask her about the nightclub? Um, she did not like the Anodic Dance Club idea. She said you guys haven't been completely honest with me about your plans. I wonder if if I choose this option, it might put another minus on my logic check. I'm gonna... Okay. Come on, man. Who will you trust? The spooky programmer or us? We just want to make the world a better place. Feel the love. Get down and feel it. Yeah! A half-hearted sell of something, which does not seem worth buying. The love... Okay, maybe I'm kind of feeling it. You'll get there, believe me. When we've got our gear set up, things will be flowing and pumping. Flowing and pumping, huh? Like drugs? Anyway, now that it's settled, how did she seem? I mean, disposition-wise, about the dance club idea. Yah, Oda 9. Rocking it or dropping it? Rocking it or dropping it, mate. Uh, she did not like the Anodic Dance Club idea. What a pity. That's my favourite thing in the world. And she doesn't like it at all. A shame. What can we do now? Do you see a way out of this jam? And into a laser lit future of dance and unity? Unity! Dance! Dance! Yeah! She made it very clear that she won't leave until her own project is finished. And you can't just evict her? No, I won't, Victor. We have to come up with a different solution. Because her stuff is interesting, too. Look at you, honor man. That's right. No, Noid. He's right. Maybe we've approached it the wrong way after all. I'm sure there's a workaround. We can make a deal not to bother her. If that's okay with her, we only want to get in the church and spread the joy and ecstasy of music. The lines in the dark exist. Coexist. At least Crabman seems like an advanced being. He's odd. He'll understand. He'll understand? Yeah. He can do his climbing thing in the tower. And the programmer, does she like anodic dance music? She absolutely does not. Like, really, truly despises it. Egghead cannot believe what she just said. It makes him pump the jam a little slower for a moment. But then he returns to the full swing of it. I can't lie to you guys. No worries. We'll figure it out. If coexisting fails... You can always muscle her out, right? If it's all okay with you, what do you think? I refuse to throw her out, but I can try convincing her. Excellent. Good luck, my friend. Ah, uh, ha ha! It does actually give us a plus. There you go, it goes up to 83%. Maybe everything isn't quite as you've been told. Take a moment to analyze. A number of things don't add up. Let's go. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. How about gather around, kids? No, because that makes me feel old. It makes me feel old. No, I'm not going to do that drama. I've got bad news for you, Andre. Things don't add up. What things? What things, innit? He senses something is wrong. Sooner said you've been lying about your plans. Your answer was very unconvincing. Yeah. Drug time. Fuck, man. It's difficult to get along with some people, but we're trying to make an effort. We are on a mission here. You're sober. Was it hard for you to keep sober for this meeting? We don't need drugs to be hardcore. Shut the fuck up, Egg. Maybe not today, Egg, but you need drugs to get through the days when you're not expecting me. Climb down from the Equestrian Monument, cop man. Consciousness is new to the universe. We all have our ways to ease the shock. I know I wouldn't be as hardcore without drugs. <laughs> Bottom line is, I know. What exactly is it you know? 
He sounds confrontational. This isn't the makings of a club, it's a tent full of laboratory equipment for manufacturing drugs. I have no idea how you arrived at that conclusion, but it's wrong. Look, we even have speakers. One speaker. They have one speaker. One speaker. You have no headphones. Wouldn't the cell need her headphones to spin tape? Where is his friend? Do you lose his friend? That noodle thread here is for its active ingredient. That distilled water, cornerstone of a clean lab. The ether in the air, a useful solvent. Good for getting acting agent out of a solution. There's no need for me to pile on any more, is there? Where is his friend? Did he lose his friend? What do you mean, friend? The other speaker. You only have one. It's a one-speaker system. It's monodynamic. You wouldn't know the first thing about sound reproduction in anodic music. Other speaker. This may be the brain damage talking, but you've definitely never heard of monodynamic or one-speaker systems. You have no headphones. Wouldn't a cell need her headphones to spin tape? What do you know about spinning tape? Nothing. That nose effect is here for its active ingredient. He said it was for his nose. What more do you want? Likely pseudoephedrine. Almost exactly the shape of ephedrine. Ephedrine makes you happy. And so does pseudoephedrine. The distilled water, cornerstone of a clean lab. And of all cellular based life. What's your point, Lawbringer? The ether in the air, a useful solvent, good for getting acting agent out of a solution. Make up your mind. First is the sweat, then it's the ether. There's no need for me to pile on any more, is there? No shit. He sounds tired. In short, you tried to use a police detective to sh set up a drug lab. That's... come on, that's... Preposterous? I meant to say, not true. So what are we going to do with you? What do you mean, do? There's resignation in his voice. He's almost ready to drop the act. It wouldn't take a lot of pushing. The optimal way to go about this would be indifference. It begins by you telling him you don't care about any of this. You tell me what's really going on and we'll work from there. I can be lenient. What do you mean by lenient? Not calling back up and holding you off to the pen, for starters. Okay, man. Okay. Things are just so, so hard for an entrepreneur in this city right now. It's not like we lied when we said we want to turn a church into the wickedest club in East Revershall. Because we do! We totally do! We just need to turn it into a speed lab before. <sighs> yeah, but, like, you know, not good. To get our foot in the door. And why did you need me? Like I told you, spooky arseholes moved in while I was getting all this stuff together. A month ago, the place was empty, and now it's all spooked up. It's so disappointing, because I, I really wanted this to go well, to actually set up like a raving cool music nightclub thing. That I can abide. Setting up a speed lab, I cannot respectfully abide, unfortunately. I, I can't allow it, because... Then we just doom Revachol into this, again, just drug spiral that we have kids like Kuno existing that need a better life. Not speed, man. They're not really spooky, are they? No, man. They're spooky, all right. It's just that they would also probably call the police if we started cooking speed in there. Yeah, they probably would. But the sign was way off, too. I couldn't feel the love at all. Sir? You promised you'd be lenient. I am being so. This is it. Judgment time. Proceed with the club. It wouldn't work without the lab. Do we have to do to keep the club alive? I am going to proceed. I, I just want the club. I just want the club, baby. I need these guys to get their act together and focus on the music, man. It's no secret that we know that drugs of all different kinds have inspired very creative minds across the years. Not on my watch, however! <laughs> Look, we're just going to proceed with the club. Let's do this clean. No speed lab, just a club for anodic music. Yeah! Yeah! 
<laughs> the young man's smile widens to inhuman proportions. His teeth beam in the floodlight. I knew it. <clears throat> the would-be leader drops his spiked head between his knees. It's impossible now. No, Andre, it's harder now. This hard cop has come to show us how much the fish is, and the fish is always so much more. We all know there was never going to be a club for anodic music with the speed lab. Now it has a fighting chance. What's that about a fish? There needs to be a club for anodic music in there. Needs to. Everyone hates each other. Everybody hates it here. It's all just drugs and we're slaves and I can't. We are running out of time. That's what I want to hear, Egghead. We need a win, Andre. I promise this will be a win. We won't cook speed in there. We'll do it clean. We'll do it true. We'll do it sober and real and beautiful. This will be a victory for the light. This will be nothing. Oh. Shivers. Party pooper. You can hear the ice crack underneath you. Outside the last century waterfront development is crumbling in the wind. A grape shot row of falling houses. And so is Rue de saint Giraud and all the houses on Main Road. The old cinema is sinking underneath Villa La Bosse. Wait, does anyone feel that? What? Nothing. Let's call this incident crime prevention, but I have my eye on you. Okay. We'll try to do it without the drugs. We'll do a straight club up in there, spinning the maddest reels, and nothing but, I swear to God. Okay, Egg? From here on, it'll be straight all the way. That's it for now. Goodbye, officer. Convince Sooner to cooperate with the Ravers or evict her. Okay, back to the church, because now we've got to try and convince someone to to get the hell out. <laughs> Be like, look, I know you've got a thing happening. But the music. But the but the music. Alright, I need to change my clothes again. Because we need to I need to get uh, I need to get into this one. We need to see what we can do. Suggestion? I don't know if we want to be dramatic about it. I might need to get off... I might need to take off the authority. I might need to take off the authority. Ooh, you know what? I need to also interact. I need to... Uh, there's some items that I need to interact with with uh, with Kim. We in we waited to interact with the bullet, but I think I also need to do my badge. Uh, empathy might be a good idea. But minus one authority. All right, let's do that. Empath empathy boots instead of perception. <laughs> Outfit, baby. Let's go. Okay. I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna go with this. Okay. Let's see how this one... Let's see... Let's see how this one plays out, shall we? Yes. What is it? What if you didn't have to leave? I talked to Andre. He wants to make it work. I don't want to make anything work. Hold on. You don't want to make anything work? Yes, anything. I don't want to make anything work. It's not the anodic dance music that's made her bitter. It's the failure of Fortress Accident. Are you bitter because your radio game project failed? That's right. If we couldn't get our Welkins to happen, I don't want anything to happen. Ever again. Okay, well that's just, like, not fair. There's not a trace of irony in her voice. She means it. Yo. This is great. Very high suggestion. Not only is our suggestion kind of up there. Research is not going well. We already discovered Fortress Accident and discovered Fortress Accident with the Dice Maker. 97%. Convince her to cooperate with the Ravers. Let's go. Easy. When her research is done, she can move out. Nice. Imagine failing that. Listen, about your research. You mentioned earlier that it's not going very well. Maybe I can help with something. What? No, I don't really need any help with the project. 
Now, if I could help you finish the project, then you wouldn't have to live in a church next to the Boom Boom anymore. Just think about it. She thinks about it. A glassy look in her eyes. A gust of wind brings more snow in from the broken gallery. It touches her hair. All right. Bring me the game's offside copy from my old workspace, if you really want to help. It's stored on a filament memory, and I'm unable to go and fetch it myself. Oh, we're going to be able to get into the other radio computer. All right, let's go. What is an offsite copy, and why do you need it? It's a backup of my former employer's project, the radio game we were working on. It's stored on a filament memory, just like the one inside this radio computer. She points to the glowing cube inside the machine. She's making it extra simple for you. I appreciate it. The backup itself is destroyed now. But I'm hoping to use what's left of it to pinpoint the exact location of the anomaly. You just have to go to my old workspace and get the filament. Hold on. If it's called an off-site copy, then why is it still on-site? If it's called an off-site copy, then why is it still on-site? Oh god, not this again. It is not on-site. It is in the basement. Perfectly safe and not connected to the front at all. Okay. Basement? Sounds like it's technically still on site. And no, taking it outside the building wouldn't have protected it from the data loss. There's nothing wrong with keeping the backup in the basement. What happened was a freak accident that has nothing to do with how the backup was stored. We clear? She stares at you with pleading, furious eyes. This is clearly a painful topic for her. She must have had to explain herself numerous times. By your old workspace, do you mean the studio of Fortress Accident in the doomed commercial area? Yeah, that's the one. You can get in through the bookshop. You just have to do some explaining to the bookstore lady. Nice. So technically, if you, if we never touched or forced that door open uh, to get in and explore all of Fortress Accident, we could we would then be doing it now, and we wouldn't have had to. We would have had a harder time with that suggestion check. That's cool. Um, wait, bookstore lady, you mean Placence? That's her name, I believe. Okay. Actually, I've already been inside the doomed commercial area. Good. Then you might know the giant ice bear fridge in the building's cellar. The filament is inside the fridge. Just go and get it. We turned... Do we... Okay. Where exactly is the off-site copy? In the giant ice bear fridge. <laughs> I just told you. It has red glowing eyes. It's impossible to miss. You just need to get the offside copy from the ice bear. But you've been to the fridge and it wasn't there. There was a note saying... Yeah, I remember this. Um, I found a note from the ice bear fridge. It said the offside copy had been moved to a safer place. Wait, a note from whom? Did it specify where they took the filament memory? Ah, uh, great. And this is like, so... Suna got in here with a crowbar, and I was like, dude, hopefully we can get crowbar instead of our pry bar and get this thing open. It's literally linked to the same thing. So this is this is good. I'm hoping to get that crowbar now so we can get it open. It said the off-site copy had been taken to a nearby ice cream maker. The note was signed by someone named Sulislo. Zawisa, of course. Our project lead. Suliswov Javiza. God, he was always so hell-bent on keeping the copy somewhere safe. That feature creep and the valley of the heads. Like it would have made a difference. The offside copy was perfectly safe when the data loss happened. That data loss was anomalous. And the heads... <sighs> I won't even get into the heads. Millions of them. Go find that copy from that ice cream maker, will you? Thanks. Valley of a thousand heads. You like the sound of that. <laughs> uh, I found the ice cream maker, but couldn't get it open. It's completely frozen. This is getting ridiculous. Can't you just defrost it? Or, I don't know. I don't know about the ice cream maker. Just figure something out. This solution. But she doesn't want to hand it over to you yet. It's a thing. Something she holds dear. You really hold that crowbar dear? Can I can I have it? Why can't you go and get the filament yourself? The bookstore lady hates me. <laughs> Says I'm part of the curse. Whatever that means. Are you part of the curse? Of course not. 
Anyway, I don't have my keys anymore and she won't let me in. Why does she think you're part of the curse? Because she's from Martinez, and people from Martinez have never ever seen a radio computer. She thinks it emits elemental evil. <laughs> what if it does emit elemental evil? That's a bit biased, don't you think? <coughs> no. She literally started praying for the higher powers when she first saw my reign, Civic. I'm not making this up. True. The lieutenant coughs like he's amused. Once I came in one morning, only to find that my terminal was full of those strange trinkets and amulets. Wards. It looked like some seminine magic. Alright, I'll go and look for the off-site copy. Thanks. She thinks for a moment, then reaches behind... <laughs> there we go. She reaches behind the radio computer and hands you what looks like an oversized pry bar. There you go. I was wondering if we are going to have to do it without it still. And here's my false multi-tool. You might need it to hack loose some ice. It opens everything. Yes. If you get me the offside copy, then you can keep the false one. Yes. It hurts a bit for her to say this. She's not too happy to be parting with the Kaval Sund. All right, I'll be work. I'll let you work in peace now. Yes, let's go. Multi-tool. This is an advanced pry bar. A pry bar plus two, if you will. Built by Kvaslund in Vasa. The number of gadgets hidden within the frame of the yellow and grey multi-tool will stagger any technician. There's more stuff to be discovered here. Equip this to open locked containers in the world. Ah, it's massive! Get this pry bar off of me. Dude, it's huge! Holy shit. All right then, let me get my, uh, let me put my cool clothes back on, please. While I'm here, I'll, I'll get all dressed up. And we'll get back, we'll get back to what I like about my stuff. Um. Hmm. Hmm, <laughs> fucking oversized superstar glasses? Let's fucking go. Let's do it. Why not? Uh, do I need my empathy shoes anymore? Maybe not. Let me get my perception boots back on. Alright, that's a huge multi-tool. Let's go. Alright. I'm heading back to the I'm heading back to the ice cream maker. We get we're getting it open. That's good. Alright. Everything links together in that way. It's very neat. Get the ice cream maker open. Find the right tool or ask sooner for help. Alright. Across Across the water lock uh, I go once again. Alright, let's get this ice cream maker open. This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand crank ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it slowly melting all right it doesn't even give you a plus by having a stronger pry bar it just gets rid of the minus that's still 42 percent okay physical instrument is required i got you covered all right so we've got the physical instrument stuff let me let me put some let me put some of that on uh physical instrument i swear we've got it's the okay it's the white tank top minus two I could also have a little bit of alcohol we could we could get that happening if I need to increase it physical instrument all right let me see what is it at it's already it's at a four all right this orange machine is dead still it has a hand crank right. ice cream churner and an electric freezer the ice around it slowly melting 50 58 percent and if i fail it i'll just put a point in the check and uh and we'll try again all right 58 percent crack open the lid let's go ice squeaks beneath your cavalzun multi-tool but your <laughs> fingers slip away from the tool the lid shut as tightly as before and it's already unplugged there's not much else to do other than wait for it to defrost or bulk up and get stronger okay um, I should have put a, we've got, we've got enough skill points, so I'm going to level it up. It's at its maximum, because we can only level things up to two. Um, so we level it up, 
This orange machine is dead still. 72%. It has a hand crank ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it slowly melting. You know what? I don't even want to I don't even want to take that chance anymore. You know what? I'm also going to I'm also going to have some alcohol. <laughs> I'm also going to have some alcohol. All right. Let's let's bump let's bump up that uh Oh my god, because my game's in windowed mode because of the sound glitch. I can't even interact with my... I can't drag it down enough to interact with the beer. I wish that you could just drink the beer while it's in the... While it's in here. Right, hold on, because what that... What I'm now going to have to do is I have to go full screen. Get out. Because you have to hold the... For some reason, you can't click the icon itself. You have to hold the arrow just underneath it. Then click it. Then I'll go back to windowed mode. This is purely just so I don't have the, the sound glitch that, that has been happening. This orange machine... 83%. Still, it has ice squeaks beneath your Kvalzun multi-tool. But your fingers slip away from the tool. The lid shut as tightly as before. And it's already unplugged. There's not much else to do other than wait for... I can only... I can... I can increase it again with another skill point to seven because I have increased my physique plus one right now. I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna have to do it again. That's crazy! That's so unlucky. That's so unlucky. Interesting thing, though, is, uh... Drinking the alcohol that has increased my... tier... here, allows me to level it up again. Which is very interesting. That it, al that it allows for that. It means I could level up, like, shivers as well, to, like, um, a higher level. But then when the the alcohol goes down, I'm confused about what'll happen. Fuck it. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this opportunity to also put another point into shivers then. If it gives me an extra thing. This orange machine. 92%. Still, it has ice growth house. Oh I was stressed. Multi-tool. It could have the lid cracks. <laughs> it could have still failed. That, that was that was a painful one. It howls and groans, but it opens. Darkness lies inside, but you can faintly make out an object, intricate and foreign, left there for a sub-zero beauty sleep, a filament memory, with the words, off-site copy, written on its side. So we're grabbing this instead. I was really wondering if she was going to give us the password to the radio computer upstairs and that we'd be able to access it, but maybe we'll, we can get that another time or another way. Disappointment washes over you, as you stare into the almost empty ice cream maker. What? No ice cream. A scoop of ice cream would have been nice, yes. <laughs> the lieutenant agrees. Someone's stomach grumbles. The room feels very cold. I'm hungry now too. I wouldn't mind some ice cream. Take the filament memory. You gently lift the cube from its frosty bedding. Careful not to damage it. We should take it back to Miss Lucan and Kilda as soon as possible. I'm not sure how well unused filaments tolerate room temperatures. Okay. Yes, but aren't you curious to know what's on the precious filament? There's a radio computer upstairs. Yeah, but I can't access it. I don't have the password. Unless the password is also after life death. How about that? Could be the same password. The cube-like crisscross of filaments feels oddly fragile in your hand. Its intricate structure still cold to the touch. Silver tape on the side reads off-site copy. Note, this filament contains information that can be read using a radio computer. Now, maybe maybe what I will do is let's go upstairs. Let's actually go upstairs and get, I think, I'm not sure if we can, but we'll see if we can take out the, um, see if we can take out um, the filament from the radio computer upstairs, because we might be able to take it to, uh, sooner and be like, yo, 
What's on this? Tiles on the cube are still This is the production schedule. Casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. All right, we're going to try the password and see if it happens. Uh, after life death, and if not, we're going to remove it. The speaker comes. Good evening. Please repeat. Good. Li after life Please death. Repeat. Good. I've unlocked the production schedule. Nice. After ending the call, Please press print to access the filament. It's the same password. Really? She just used the same password? Maybe those radio computer guys aren't that paranoid after all. The password is password. Fortress accident. Is there anything else? Thank you and goodbye. Tiles on the cube are still nice. smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. Time to press print. With a quiet determination, the printer starts printing. A piece of paper unfolding like a handheld fan. A black crisscross of letters covers its surface. Read the printout. It's a project report written by the lead producer, Andrew Andy Schott, about Wirral Untethered, a radio game developed by Studio Fortress Accident. The first few pages give an overview of the capital and workforce while the rest of it seems to be a production schedule. Uh, there could be some interesting stuff here. I don't know how en engaging or exciting it's going to be, but let's read through it. Read about capital. I want to know about money. In its short time of existence, <clears throat> Fortress Accident SCA managed to burn through truly insane amounts of money. The first tranche of seed financing brought in 150,000 rear, but then came the delays. Eventually, the damage reached 400,000 real, with only half of the game finished. 400,000 real? Yo, my yo. These guys knew how to party. Gosh, where did they get all this money? Let's just say it was a real adventure for their Egaunian investor. Read about the workforce. Who worked here? How long? Fortress Accident employed 18 people. The bulk of the team composed of writers and concept artists. There were also radio programmers, sound engineers, a CEO, two marketing experts, and a single overburdened producer who developed a habit of popping Porolidon in the basement to escape his obligations. But on the other hand, their obligations were piling up at an inhumane rate, a rate that could only be amended by Porolidon. Porolidon. Why did Fortress Accident have so many concept artists? Wait, why did a radio game need so many artists? It didn't. It didn't need so many concept artists? No, definitely not. A few more producers could have come in handy though, especially when dealing with writers, some of whom routinely skip to work because of mental health issues and extremely unprofessional sleep schedules. One of them even managed to steal some valuable company property before skipping town for good. Skim through the production schedule, whatever it is. The production schedule depicts the glorious descent into bankruptcy. Because of the concept artists. Not the concept artists. It wasn't even the writers, with their panic attacks and three-hour lunches. It was impossible not to fail. The project was too large, and no amount of money could satiate the ever-expanding ambitions of the development team. They tried to make a four million real game with 400,000 in their bank account. Yeah. They thought they could bridge the gap with pure willpower and imagination. They couldn't. I could have bridged the gap. No, you couldn't have. <laughs> what do you mean? I totally could have. Definitely not. Ah, 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 they're all impossible. Ah. Not a chance. God damn it. Even then, success remained within an ever narrowing margin of possibility that, despite everything, never entirely disappeared. That is, until they discovered the Valley of the Heads. There it is. The what? At the 11th hour, the lead designer, Jimsk-born Suliswav Jalisa, decided that what Wirral Untethered needed was a secret mystical location at the extreme edge of the map. Valley of the Heads. This place was to be the Valley of the Heads, where the heads of all the headless constructs could be found. The player would have been able to choose a head for their headless party member, and each head would have been voiced on air by a professional actor. 
That is such an amazing concept, but also so expensive. This is some insane shit. Who were these people? The world had never seen their kind before and might never again. How many heads were there? So many. The last count, there were approximately 10,000 heads for 10,000 headless men, all of which could be endlessly recombined. God, how many combinations could you make out of that? Do you really want to know? There seems to be a calculation here, but it may take a while. Yeah, how bad could it be? Ah! <laughs> oh, thank you for that. Numbers. Mm -mm. All possible combinations. Thank you. Keep going. We've gone this far. Fucking keep going. Give it to me straight, Doc. The lieutenant taps his foot impatiently, his arms folded tight against his chest. He's dying for a cigarette. Come to think of it, you are too. I wonder if I'd smoke a cigarette if Kim would ever mention anything about it and I'd also smoke one. Uh, keep going. We've, we've gone too far now. We must reach the end. We must go to the end of this journey. What if you broke the radio computer? What if it's never going to stop? Just let the numbers wash over you. Let's go, dude. Ah, we got zeros and that's it. Woo! And that's it. Thank you. Okay, so that's what did them in? Well, yeah. That and the catastrophic data loss. This must be the anomaly sooner mentioned in the church log. On the nature of the data loss, there's ominously little information in the production log. It comes at the very end where things get fuzzy and dark, where tables and numbers seem to vanish into an eerie nothingness before the Egaunian investors pulled the plug. What is clear is that one day an unidentified numeric anomaly occurred on the East Insulindian Lintel Front, just as the World Untethered project was being compiled that day. The anomaly caused all the data to get lost in the air? When the project was returned, it was completely blank. The team spent weeks on the phone with Lintel, the service <coughs> provider, but despite their diagnostics, they could never produce a satisfactory explanation or pay for the loss. What, they lost the whole game and wouldn't even pay for it? Always read the terms of service. Mm. And let's face it, they didn't have any money left for a legal action. Wasn't there a copy of the game, like a backup? Mysteriously enough, it seems that the off-site copy happened to be on-site when the catastrophic data loss occurred. Goddamn. It was the lead programmer's responsibility to oversee weekly maintenance of the off-site copy and, well, keep it off-site. An explanatory note from the lead programmer has been attached. What does it say? S. Lukanen Kilda, the lead programmer of Fortress Accident. The off-site copy was on-site because there was no off-site anymore. Not for me, not after eight months of crunch. I didn't have a home anymore, so I started keeping it in the basement in the ice bear refrigerator near where I went to sleep. It was perfectly safe there. The temperature conditions were optimal. It's not very convincing, is it? Her former colleagues would agree with you. Is there anything else from this lead programmer? The production schedule ends with a few random notes that seem to be added sometime later. Read the notes at the end. Four months later, by an unknown author. I am the only one left and it's gotten rather damp here. A few other businesses have gone under too. Slipstream switched to making skis and the hairdressers just left, cursing Martinez. They're right though. Something's seriously wrong with this place. Martinez, all of it. Still haven't got an answer from Lintel about what happened. All I could get were the physical coordinates of the error on the East Insulindian front on that day. Since the computation happened on air, I reckoned it had to coincide with an actually existing location. I have compared the coordinates to a map of Revachol West. Turns out it's only 800 meters from here. The address is Saint Brune 1147. I am going there to look this thing in the eye. Mm. And this would be the church. Sandbrun 1147. 
That's what the street sign next to the church said. Tear off the printout and throw it away. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering. Casting. Remove the production schedule. The filament slides out of its glowing nest. Insert the off-site copy. Let's have a look. Like a smooth drawer, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. The speaker comes to life. Static seeps. Good evening. Oh, hang on. I don't need to do this. Is this the off Good. No, that's <gasps> not it. Oh, different password for... Okay, right. Different passwords for different filaments. Afterlife death is not the password for an off-site copy. Okay, that doesn't make sense. I thought the computer as a whole was the needed the password, but that does make more sense. Different filaments. Ah, interesting. So, the production schedule is afterlife death, but the off-site copy is different. What does she mean? That's not it. Mm. What's the password then? Ooh, I don't know. Maybe it's the second part of the light motif you saw on the stained glass window. Ooh, after death, life again? Good. Ah. I even love the offside copy. Yo. After ending the call, please press print to access the dilemma. Mm-hmm. Ka-ching. Mm-mm. Fortress -mm. accident. Thank you. Tiles on the Hell key. yeah, let's go. Still Press print. It sounds like something cracks before the piece of paper starts filling up with pure black ink. Something's broken. Machines aren't supposed to behave like this. Ah, so the off-site copy is kind of busted. All right, read the printout. The paper is soaked with ink. It's monochrome darkness spanning from margin to margin. It's not possible to make out any information. 80... 3% red check. Perception. Examine the printout again. A single speck of white shines out from the shade. For some reason, the printer decided to spare this one tiny dot of paper. Marked by the devil itself. Looks like gibberish. Better get running again. Okay. Do a perception check just for a single white dot. Pale blue dot in this universe. What happened? It's just covered in ink. Odd. Something is obviously broken here. Tear off the printout. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering. The filament slides out of its glowing nest. All right. Done. So, we've got both of the... we got both of the production filaments. Let's get the hell out of here. Let's get the hell out of here, shall we? Should we take a... Should we try and take another pass through the, um... Through here and try and see if we can... Lift up this... This bar? I don't know if we can. Uh... Because I think it... I think, it, again, it's an, a physical instrument check. But we're probably in the best period to do a physical instrument check. Because it's currently at 7 and we've got beer in us. I've uh, got wine in us as well as leveling it up. And wearing the tank top. Let's try again. The barbell waits patiently. Seventy-two percent. Like a dog for its master. Ah, oh, seventy-two percent. Come on, dude. Ah, oh, that's frustrating. Dude, seventy-two percent. You managed to hot see, see. Mm. It wasn't such a good idea to smash through that back door. Seems like I'm just a little out of shape. Fuck you, stupid barbell. Weightlifting was never my favorite. <laughs> at the station gym, I mean. I prefer God ring. damn. I can't put another point into physical instrument now, though. I'm gonna have to wait for that to, like, open up via some other means, maybe. I don't know. Damn. That is, that is straight tragic. 72%. That was our best chance currently to do that genuinely was with alcohol, physical instrument increases and everything. So I'm assuming, I'm going to come to the conclusion that maybe if the alcohol wears off, maybe these points go back down. Uh, which is a problem. Um, however, if we drink alcohol again and it increases our physique, I'm wondering if it will then allow us once more to increase uh, the level. Probably not though, because it, it'll only go up to a three again. So, that's a shame. Looks like Guillaume, Le Million, 
that here poster. Hello Pleasants, just us coming through the, the back door, don't worry about us. Oh, actually I've got money. I have money, I can buy some stuff from this store. I'm rocking 63 real right now. I could buy that board game, was it? I think the board game was only 20 real, right? Kim, you wanna play a board game with me? A small mountain of colorful board games. Where I was 25 there are and Suzerain Tea is 12. All ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Wiral related merchandise. I want to buy the Wiral game. If you say so, but you better stay away from those immoral occult rituals. Interact. A high personal fantastique populaire board game illustrated with uh, bucolic vistas and featuring odd looking humanoid creatures. It's the third edition mega setting supplements module and can't be played without. It can't be played without the main game? Oh. Large letters on the front form a title. We're out. The colorful box is illustrated with bucolic vistas. The cover art also features odd looking humanoids. Some short, some taller, some with pointy ears, others with ephemeral wings. Hey, Placence, do you have a return policy? Just in case, you know, I don't, because I, I can't actually play this game. <laughs> Examine the box. Text underneath the title in smaller typeface reads, Third edition, Mega Setting Supplements module. The side panel adds, A sword and sorcery adventure board game with new maps and miniatures. Shake the box. Mysterious things rattle inside. What could they be? Dice? Plastic miniatures? A fantastical alternate world full of magic and wonder? None of that witless man from Hyomdal, fascist dross, hidden behind faux realistic allegory. Wural is no cliche ridden apologia for colonial violence. Wural is pure imagination. Yes, the Wirral setting is known for its complicated system of political alignments. But if you're not into that, you can just hack your way through dungeons in search of loot. That's what most people do. Look at the back. A blurb on the back reads, Tired of the tedium and toil of modern life? Escape to Wirral. Leave behind Isolas and nations with their petty squabbles. Discard electricity magnets, and boring technological widgets. Succumb to a world of high pasternal fantastique. Unleash your imagination and create an adventure of endless possibilities. Discover the terrible secret threatening Wirral. Can your band of adventurers save the world? Yes, we're ready to take on this challenge. Exactly. That's the spirit. All you have to do is read an intricate rulebook, study an assortment of maps, Unfold the illustrated game board and start rolling dice. Sounds perfect. In no time, you could be romping through grasslands with low-level characters, hunted by Iskala riders, or battling unspeakable monsters in endless dungeons fraught with danger and despair, conjuring up forceful magics to aid your quest. Hmm. Don't forget heated arguments escalate into physical confrontation with your friends. <laughs> yes. And beer. Lots of beer. And most importantly, never forget to rage quit if the dice don't go your way. <laughs> yeah. Open the box. You pry open the box. Inside you find a folded up map, a small booklet, a 24-sided die, and a little plastic figurine. Okay. We've got a full inspection to do on this thing. We're going to do it. A colorful in a box second. With I'm gonna put the box away. We can we can reinspect that. So thank you, Placids, for your time. Maybe I'll get that Suzerainty game another day when I get some more money. Uh, I'll inspect that properly as well as the badge. But for now, let's focus on the let's focus on the filament. Let's get that over to uh, let's get that over to sooner, and then we will uh, we'll see how we go with the rest. The same address the lead programmer of Fortress Accident was looking for. That's the one. Okay. 
back in the church. And we have the off-site copy. Cold wind blows in from the broken gallery, makes your skin crawl. Yes, what is it? She doesn't look up from the keyboard. Uh, okay. Uh, about the off-site copy you asked me to bring. Yes. Oh, you can show her the production schedule. Interesting. Um, uh, it's, it makes me want to show the second... Just to, like, see what she says about it. No. That's the production schedule you stole and accessed without authorization. <laughs> I don't need it. Access without authorization. In his defense, it was simply laying in the desk drawer of an abandoned cubicle. Okay, but still. <laughs> okay, but still. Alright, I brought you the filament. Give her the off-site copy. Thanks. Looks like it's the one. Alright, uh, what's going to happen now? Now, I'm going to print it out to see what's left of it. Um, yes, well... Don't waste your time printing it out. There's nothing but a speck of white and a sea of ink. It's broken. A speck of white? That's exactly what I'm hoping to find. Oh, I was wondering if that was going to have a connection, because that—that's the two millimeter hole, right? I guess it, that's what it's going to—it's going to represent the hole in the world. What do you mean? Lintel was able to divine the location of the anomaly from this broken copy. I want to repeat their calculation, only this time with better equipment. Watch. What an intricate display of failure. The paper gets soaked in ink again. Its evil blackness shining in the light of the mainframe. It looks eerie. Play it cool, step back, something's very wrong with that filament memory. Now what? Something's very wrong with that filament memory. Sona doesn't reply. Her hands running over the printout. She's looking for something. For her morning star. Eyes scouring the millimeters. Here, I found it. Rising her ink stained fingertip. It's that white dot in the same place I saw it went before when I printed it out. Hold on. Can I do anything? Shh. Just give me a second. I'm almost. She clocks up her typing speed. I've never witnessed a programmer work before. Mm -hmm. Done. I've got it. I found the location of the anomaly. Okay. You did it. You found the coordinates. I found the coordinates. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. My God, congratulations. Thank you. So where is it? Where is your two millimeter hole in the world? There. In the swallow. I was in the swallow. She points at the other end of the church where the group of water bowls forms a ritualistic arch. Think you can help me again? Sure. I need you to go move those water bowls for me. I need to double check my calculations. Okay. Just walk over to the circle and follow my instructions. Move the third bowl two centimeters to the left and the fourth bowl five centimeters to the right. This should do the trick. Sure, no problem. Thanks. Okay. Move the water bowls to the right position and report back. We're getting close to something. It's awfully silent again. As if someone turned off the entire world outside those walls. Water inside the bowls stands still. Measurements have been marked down around the bowls. Each chalk drawn line representing a centimeter on the floor. Okay, move the third bowl from the left two centimeters away. It moves like a ghost without creating a single trace of sound. Move the fourth bowl from the left five centimeters to the right. Some water spills out of the bowl, wetting the floor. The lead programmer sends you an encouraging thumbs up from across the hall. Time to run back, or maybe walk. This is a sacred place after all. Okay. I must run, I'm in a hurry. <laughs> Yes, what is it? I moved the water bowls to the right position just like you asked. What's next? Great. Everything should be aligned now. She stops, biting into her chapped lip. What's wrong? Yeah. Uh, nothing. 
Now the only thing left to do is to unmute the headphones. Unmute the headphones. If we got the location right, we should then be able to hear whatever sound this anomaly makes. Wait, why did you have your headphones on mute in the first place? Honestly? Honestly, I'm a little scared. Isn't it going to be just silence and nothing else? I don't know. That's what I'm scared of. I don't know. It could be anything. Okay. I mean, what sound does the nothing make? How can you even listen to something that doesn't exist? What if silence is only what surrounds it, but the swallow itself is... You're right, we should be cautious. We don't know what we're dealing with here. I'm just gonna say, what? I don't know. I'm just scared. Maybe it's going to be something terrifying. M maybe it's going to tear the world apart. Open up a black hole in the in this church. Like the evil ink that filled the printout, erasing coherence and meaning. You're overthinking this. Maybe. Maybe I'm just tired. It's scary, but we have to just face it. Yeah. You're right. Let's do it. Let's go. She puts on her oversized headphones, ready to press unmute on the keyboard. Maybe unmute it without the headphones on first, because then... What if your head explodes? The lieutenant takes a step back. And then, nothing. Nothing happens as Sona Lorcan and Kilda presses unmute on her keyboard. Nothing but silence. You can hear some small animal cross the floor in the chancel. It's that quiet in the sanctuary. Can you hear anything? She doesn't answer. Her eyes closed and brows knitted together in a state of deep focus, one hand cupping the headphone. Well? Damn it! She's still avoiding your gaze. Come on, did you hear anything? No, of course not! Nothing happened, let's move on! Despite her fear, she was hoping for something extraordinary to take place. What do you mean, nothing happened? Did you find the swallow? No. No. My hypothesis was wrong. According to this, I should have heard something, if I got the coordinates right. Like I said, silence is only what surrounds it. This is just like, uh, this is, this is a phasmid. This is some cryptozoology stuff. We're looking for an invisible sound-based life form that creates silence around it. It mutes its surroundings. It's certainly a phasmid. But this... This is just another failure. Silence sounds like silence. That's all it is. I'm seeing a pattern of people in this uh, in this location with a lot of passion projects and a lot of things that they want to do. Uh, and so far, we've just hit our second one that seems to then come to like this moment where we might have results, and it's just utter failure again. So first, we've had the the Insul Indian phasmid, and now we've had the swallow. You can try on the headphones. See if you can hear anything. But don't get your hopes up. Mm. Silence is silence. You're sure there's more to it. This can't be it. You should have a listen. Helping Ed Egghead with his jam gave us a 42%. Uh, let me change my perception. Hold on a sec. Um, we certainly have more. Let me put on my perceptive glasses. Oh, nope. Those were not my perceptive glasses. <laughs> I forgot that that's minus perception glasses. Um, do I even have anything else that'll give me more perception? Over everything else, let me see. It's minus one to perception. Hmm. No. Okay. That's a shame. That is most certainly a shame. Okay. Um. Yeah, we can we can retry it. So our perception can be leveled up as well, which is nice. We do have a skill point. All right. Let's take a chance. Yes. What is it? Forty-two percent perception. Helping Egghead with his jam. Yeah. All you hear is your own breathing, heavy and hoarse from all the nights spent drinking. Mm. It's the breath of an old man. 
We're not getting some great roles, are we? But there's something else. There has to be something big, something unexpected, something new, yet to be discovered. Ghosts, speak to me. When was the last time this world had anything new to say? Well, did you hear anything? No. I'm not sure. There seems to be something there, but I couldn't really make it out. Yeah. No, I don't think there's anything there. Her voice is bitter with disappointment. The lieutenant looks down at the floor, as if to say, you're wasting time here. Maybe the speed freaks can help you with this. Go talk with Andre. Ooh, okay. Ah, oh, that's an interesting little side note then. Go talk with Andre. Okay. There may just indeed be a follow-up. And then we, I don't know if it's going to reopen the white check, however, considering the timing of the failure and go talk with Andre, speaking to him may open up the white check without us having to level it back up again. Andre, I need your assistance, my man. Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? Uh, I guess I'm here to talk about, talk about the church. Yes. What's the deal? Um, yeah, I'm making progress in the church, but it's slow going. There's a hitch in Sooner's research. What kind of a hitch? She's trying to catch an anomaly using a special microphone setup, but she can't hear the audio coming through her headphones. An audio shortfall, you say? Guess what? We got speakers with massive low end. There's a good chance it can do it. They've got one speaker. One. Uno. Um. I think we may have found a solution. We've got some serious range on this baby. It'll blast her shoes off. Believe me. Okay. Goodbye, officer. We may be out. Okay, then we'll go back. So glad that this drawbridge exists. Uh, we'll go back and then we'll talk to Sooner and be like, yo, they have a one singular speaker. Um, that may be able to help. Let's see. Instead of the headphones. Would have yes. been nice if what we got... Would have been nice if we got a success. Oh, it's just unlocked. Oh, and it went up to a 58. Examined the Raver's speakers. Puts it up to a 58%. Alright, let's try it again. Everything disappears. Ooh. You are draped in silence like a drowning man staring into his puny little headspace. And then the pressure changes. What does it mean? It feels like flying on an aerostatic, or when your ears pop, or like a subtle difference in the atmosphere, a weather change hanging in the air. What if the sound you're looking for is too low for you to hear it? Sooner, take off the headphones. What if we just need a better sound system? A better sound system? All right, but where would we get one? I know a couple of people. Suddenly, a rhythmic beat permeates the walls causing a small patch of decorative stucco to crumble onto the wooden floor. They should really allocate some renovation funds for this place. <laughs> no. What they really should do is shut down the disco men for disturbing neighborhood peace. Yes, but they could help with the speakers. You mean the speed freaks? She closes her eyes as more dance music invades the holy silence of the sanctuary. Of course. The speed freaks. They have a fantastic sound system. And you think they would help me? They would, if you wouldn't mind them moving in with you. I guess I could live through a week or two of peaceful coexistence. Brilliant negotiating there, Detective. As always. Nice, great. I'll go talk to them then. Sure. Let me know how it goes. Thanks, officer. Nice. The swallow, you mean? Great. Thanks. Alrighty. <laughs> Check up on Sooner's project after Ravers have moved in. Help Ravers start a nightclub. Remove, report back to Andre that they can move in. And it will be not a not a speed lab, but an anodic dance club. Nightclub. Only. Getting multiple multiple things done at once. That's what I that's what I like to see. Good stuff. Good stuff. Jolly good. Hi again. So, uh, uh, yes? What I managed to convince Suna. She's okay with you guys moving in, but on one condition. She needs your speakers for a project. 
We are grateful, Cotman. You're an augury of a new era of anodic dance music. The speed freak smiles, happier than he's ever been before. You're going to have to share space for a couple of weeks until she gets her research finished. That's fine. We can manage. And you're still sure about keeping our little side business, right? Oh, you mean the illegal drug lab? There will be no shady shenanigans in the church, only love and anodic dance music, okay? Fine. We can make do. It's going to take us a bit to move our stuff inside. A couple of hours, maybe. Come check back later. Let's get moving. Leave the tent. Okay. Awesome. So they're going to be moving in. Oh, goodbye tent. And Acel's gone then uh, as well. So we'll probably be able to talk to Acel later on at some point. Um... talk to a cell later at some point now that we've been able to help them get in. Okay. okay. We'll have to run through some of those opened up white checks soon as well. Some of the new ones with previous characters. So a couple of hours. Apparently. So we might need to put a put the brakes. Oh no, never mind. They're all in here. A couple of hours didn't pass, really. Nice. Okay. Yeah, it's all set up, man. Can you already imagine a thousand people in here? Ten thousand. He waves his hands in an unbelievably lame, non-hardcore manner. Ecstatic vibrations, totally transcendent, and I've finished setting up the new compressor too. Now, the only thing left to do is the name of the club. Will you do the honours, Detective? What do you propose as the name? A cell, what would you suggest? Egghead, you must have a lot of ideas. Noid, give me your two cents. Suna, do you have an opinion? And Kim, how would you name the club? Okay, we can get everyone's opinions on this. This is actually kind of cool. What, would, uh, what do you propose as the name, Andre? The name? Everything I managed to come up with sounds just wrong. <laughs> Andre's overthinking it. Yes, you should do it, Detective. It would be good for the signs. Lloyd's right. You've helped us so much. It's the right thing to do. So, what would you suggest as the name? How about something simple? Like the club? The club? Too modern and too ironic. We don't want ironic. We want real. Real and true and beautiful. Like a morning after the rave. Egghead, you must have a lot of ideas. Yako Kata! Kata! The place to be! The place to be! Yako Kata, the zone of ecological catastrophe. <laughs> That's too morbid, Egg. Got anything else? Too morbid, mate. Hard car! Hard car to the nigger! No, it has to be bigger than hardcore. Yes! It has to be even bigger than Harcourt to the Mega! It has to be bigger than the scene! Noid, give me your two cents on the issue. The amnesia. The amnesia. Ooh, weirdly fitting to my own condition right now. Like the... I can't remember the name of the club amnesia. Amnesia! Amnesia! It's not amnesia, guys. Okay, so that's not happening. Uh, Suna, do you have an opinion on this? I don't. <laughs> Good. We have too many opinions anyway. Kim, how would you name the club? I wouldn't. I wouldn't build a club and I wouldn't name it either. Okay. Thanks, Kim. An underground place with no name? Sounds like something the Crab Man would say. We're not going with anything the Crab Man would say. Why not? Can we ask him? Why not? The Crab Man has ideas, herself. Ideas from another level of consciousness. <laughs> I don't care. I don't like the crab man, and I don't like his ideas. His ideas are spooky. Next, please. Okay. I think I've come up with a name. It's my turn. You have? Well, what's the name? Oh, fuck. We can name it the... Oh, dude. Okay. Now... Okay. Revishaw West. Eh-eh. However, I believe 
uh, it has been mentioned in the comments that the original name for this game, I believe, was No Truce with the Furies. I think that's what um, was mentioned, if I'm remembering that correctly. Apparently, the original name of this game was No Truce with the Furies. Um, let's go with Disco Elysium. Because that's, fu that's fucking great. Dude, the name of the game. Disco Elysium. Like that DeLorean word for the world, you mean? Elysium. But Disco Elysium? Isn't it wacky? Disco's kind of gone, isn't it? Forgotten. No. We're bringing it back. But the future is dead. No, it's beautiful. Beautiful and brave. Like we want it to be. And short. And memorable. Exactly. It's settled then. Everyone welcome to Disco Elysium. Nice. A light beam washes over the dance floor, bathing it in a violet blue. Andre breaks into frenzied dance-like motion to celebrate the name. Someone turns up the beat. Yes. You should go with the flow. Join in on the experience. Yes, I'm dancing right now. Kim, dance with me, baby. Start tapping your foot. It feels good. It feels right. But what is this? What is this thing that Andre is doing with his limbs? Observe his movement. What are you doing, Andre? I'm dancing! He performs yet another strange pattern of moves, but it doesn't look very cool or modern. Honestly, it could, looks kind of lame. That soft core gyrating is supposed to be dancing? We should talk about it. We should talk about your so-called dancing. Yes, my man! He jumps up and down with glee, his moves punctuated by the uh, stroboscopic flash of the club lights. Talk? What is there to talk about if you can express yourself with moves? Audio waves thump against your ribcage. The speaker setup makes everything sound much better. But there's a noticeable lack of something. Savoir faire is required. Uh, dance fever and standard anti wirral die. Puts it up as... 17%. Goodbye, officer. Give me a second. Love that I love that the flare cut trousers and the snakeskin shoes are both minuses to that. I don't know, I feel like they should be a plus. Give me my give me my disco clothes. Make it a plus. Um I don't think. Yes, oversized glasses. Oversized glasses. That's one. That's that's kind of that's kind of it though. <laughs> and then we do have a skill point if we wanna we can't actually. I need I actually to level it up past seven, I will need to take speed. <laughs> The the fact that the, the game, I'm like, no speed labs, guys, but if I want to dance with you and actually succeed, I need to increase my savoir faire with speed. Just can't win, can I? Oh, hey, man. It's good to see you. 28% impossible. No words, just dance. God damn. It's to express my individuality. Is that a bald spot? It's hard to tell for sure with the fused together spikes, but it looks like he's balding. Is it important to you, uh, for you to be an individual? Of course it is. Otherwise, I'd just be another poor guy with no education and no money. General issue, man. Now I'm all that, and I have radical spikes. Fair enough. Maybe it was a bad idea. Anyway. I wonder if I can gather some more percentage. Goodbye, officer. By by talking around first. Yes. Let's ask around first. Denarian Church, the place to be! Make the noise, my church people! Large speakers are set up behind the young man blasting a familiar song. Vibrations thump through your blue soul. The music sounds much better in the church. He stands on stage behind a table nodding along to the music and waving his hand in the air. In front of him, the audio mixer, one reel spinning. The other reel deck is empty, 
cables run hither and thither. On one side you see an auxiliary line in with the number 4.5 written next to it. I really don't have a tape with me yet because it's fucking an empty tape. How do you like it in the church? Yeah! Back on the case! No disgrace! Bring it down to party place! Bring it down to party place! The first page of the second chapter! Could it be? Maybe for him. You only have a chapter or two left in you. Last of the penultimate, more like. Hmm. Okay. Annoyed. You got us in, cop. I can't believe you got us in. Between you and me, I don't know if you've noticed this about me. I'm a little suspicious of authority. But you, you really came through for the hardcore underground. Of course I did, Noid. Yes, you really came through for the hardcore underground. How come? Uh, hardcore! Andre is busy cutting some slightly less lame, but still quite ungainly shapes on the church floor, sweating profusely. A cell using her contact mic to listen to a tree underwater. The one with the large head is blasting the dance track on repeat, while the stained glass window behind him is rattling from the base. Sire, the tent, twas a security risk. And in here, sanctuary. It was only noble of you. I did it for mankind, for all of mankind. These kids got spunk. I admire that better here than in the tent. It wasn't safe. These kids got spunk. I admire that. Okay. What he means is. You can't possibly have handed them this real estate for such a flimsy reason. Then again, whatever keeps your nose out of the bottle and on the job. Noid, what do you think about the church? It's a miracle of carpentry. Their bodies carved into total shapes. Now it can be something more. How old do you think this church is? Over 300 years? That's right. The first settlers built it, plus six more like it, on the coast here was one of the first things they did. Must have been really scared of something, but I understand. Alone on an uninhabited archipelago, forced to face themselves and nature. Pre-industrial quantities of solitude. The sea, perhaps something more fundamental. He means something paranatural. He must. I would want to build a safe place for myself and my own as well. Okay. What style is this church built in? A cop who's in the building critique. Okay then. <laughs> this is folk DeLoreanism, lawmonger, huh? It's a subset of early DeLorean architecture. I'm not just a cop, I'm an art cop. Hard of core. Hard of core. Okay, what do, and what is DeLorean architecture like? Total. Everything between an ancient concrete cathedral and a glass cube is DeLoreanism. This is just an homespun version of it. Folksy stuff. Early mass production. They made thousands like this. Does that help you out? What would a DeLorean building look like? Like that woman there. Vertical, thin, white. A false image of grandeur. The source of the system is up there. You're at the bottom. They really dug that power vertical. Like to show off large and intricate structures. Arches, spires, put you down with them. They were really into painting everything white too. Virginal shit, you know. Marriage shit, virtue and tyranny. Marriage is shit, yeah. Right. <laughs> the church isn't painted white as far as I can tell. Stands to reason it used to be white on the outside before the sea wind took all the paint off. Slowly peeled by the wind. Your skin crawls from the sensation as you look around. What did you mean by dead bodies? Dead bodies are perennial plants. Sigma functions are left this place. It's a good thing we came along. The spiritual collapse has been total. Spiritual collapse? I saw some piglets suckling their dead mother. Have you heard this one, cop man? 
After a short while, they shuddered and went away. They had sensed that she could no longer see them and that she wasn't like them anymore. What they loved in their mother weren't her body, but whatever it was that made her body live. End of quote. This is an high quality carcass. The pair of anodic beats and hard bases needed to reanimate it. First, where is that quote from? A Sarai's man who lived a long time ago, an ancient hardcore brother. What you're saying is religion has stopped being hardcore, or you're not a big fan of the innocentic system? A 3,000 year old tyrannical regime of history, built and maintained by hundreds of generations of self-appointed intellectuals. It's false core. False core? The way he says it, the force in false core is invested with 20 kilotons of disgust. But you guys said that the um, Ecclesiates were all about love and hardcore before, remember? I only said unity. One word. Figures of authority always misquote you. Andre doesn't care about the Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. He just wants the operation to run smoothly. And Egg is a demi-beast. You shouldn't listen to what people say. You should listen to what they are. And you propose dance music will supplant this system? Anodic dance music. Regular dance music wasn't hard enough. And yes, I do. How do you like the glasswork? I don't. Fuck, are giving me the evil eye. I'm getting some real negative vibrations from her too. No wonder. We have to get rid of it. Dismantle it. Can't dance with a giant mass murderer looking at ya. Not a good look for the club. Mellow man, mellow. No one's a mass murderer. This is a house of love. Mass murder on the floor. Uh, okay, but she's pretty. Yeah, but like, who isn't accused of being a mass murderer these days? The resettlement program's totally okay. I do feel there is something terrifying about her. Isn't she supposed to be the embodiment of a world spirit? Would you say she was, you know, human? That's another thing, because I looked at it and said, she's not human. I do feel there is something terrifying about her. There is. She is a party repellent and must be taken down before we can begin partying in here. No, that's not it. It's something more. Something closer to your skin. Say nothing. Stare grimly into the distance. The speed freak looks the same way. It is dark there in the back of the church. For a moment, the music echoes strangely. Would you say she was, you know, human? <laughs> I like this question, cop man. She did not live the life of a human. She lived like someone who's playing a game. The life of an operator. That's not the life that humans live. She was adored. Humans aren't. I don't know about you, but they hate me. And they do not think I'm innocent or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. She was a player. She played us all. It's just a game to her. Um, yes. He lets go of his suspenders and he hit his chest with a slap. This speed freak does not quite understand the sudden escalation of emotion in that argument, but he agrees nonetheless. Maybe we can come back to this later. I'm done talking about her. I don't want to think about her anymore. What a strange choice of words. Caustic. Overflowing with negativity. That can't be healthy. What's happening here? Why do you keep coming back to this window? I don't know. Well, you shouldn't. You shouldn't come back to this anymore. <laughs> stop talking about it. Please. They're really just like, stop talking about it. I'll heal my health because it went down but uh, earlier. But my morale can stay at two for, for a second. How are you settling in? Hard to say, cop man. Signs in here are distinctly wild. Gonna take a while before everything's properly synced. All right, man. I did get to talk to the crab man, though. You mean Tiago? Anyway, he's been giving me kind of a psychic rundown of this place. Dude's seen some crazy shit, but he's actually a lot like us. You mean all his mother's love stuff isn't too spooky for you? 
Have you been listening to what Egg's been saying? Love is hardcore, man. And the mother's love is the hardest core of all. The man picks up on stuff. And he knows a lot about the church. I got a lot to learn from him. Good thing you didn't squash him. <laughs> okay. What did Tiago tell you about the church? The crab man's been lurking here for a while. He's experienced things. Things that give off bad signs. As far as we can tell, the Ubies built this place about 320 years ago as a sarcophagus. You mean there are dead bodies here? Not like a literal sarcophagus. I'm just being metaphorical. Metaphorical, innit? What's it for? Encasement, confinement, of something they were afraid of. Something new and unheard of on the Isola. I think that's what the crab man is experiencing when he climbs around upstairs. Okay. Like, this is some old world shit the Ubies had heard about. I thought the best way to deal with it was to build a church surrounding it to contain it. I don't get it. Contain what exactly? I don't know. And it's not something they properly understood either. What it does. But it's what this sonar person is looking for and trying to measure. It'll be fruitless though. She won't be able to measure it. People like that always want to measure everything. All those things they really can't. The wood creaks as a gale blows by, outside. Dust particles fall through the darkness, settling down on the age-bleached floorboards. The structure does not feel particularly durable. I wonder if this place is going to collapse with the music. <laughs> this place, this building seems less than structurally sound. No, it's pretty fucking unsound if you ask me. They should have built a club for a nodic music around it instead. <laughs> Anodic music will definitely contain whatever we're dealing with. And if it can't, well... What makes you think Sona's going to fail? Seems to be the trend around here, doesn't it? You can't measure shit like this. It's not like... substance. I found a doomed commercial area in Martinez proper. Maybe it's the same thing the Ubies were trying to contain? Like a concentric ring spreading out, the struggling villages. And that is what caused the communards to fail in defending the beachhead. Yeah, a lot of failure has gone down around here. You think there's any merit to the theory? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. It's not a thing we can answer, cop man. Even I have limits. I'm a limited psi person. A limited psi person? Well, if it's not without substance, I guess there's nothing to worry about. Maybe you can figure things out, cop man. I think we got on a good level here. The signs are syncing up well. Why are you so suspicious about everything, Noid? Suspicious people are esoteric <coughs> people. We don't go around spilling everything to Johnny Law. They don't call me Noid for nothing. It took us setting out for this whole enterprise to get our signs synced. Why are you called Noid anyway? It's short for paranoid. Oh, <laughs> okay. Paranaturally paranoid. May I ask why? What good is being suspicious? A reasonable question. Say I get hurt. I want to make sure it never happens again. So I analyze the situation. Exercise caution. Caution is suspicion. What are you suspicious of? Uh, it'd be easier to list stuff I'm not suspicious of. I'm not suspicious of sand and color. Mechanics and chemistry also have a trueness about them. Most anything else deceives. Wants to steal your life away. Okay. This is a good, dangerous line of questioning. You should prod him on. And what are the most suspicious things? I don't have a top ten list of things I'm most suspicious of. But if I had one, the left-right complex would be number one. Number two would be their sole accomplishment. The pig wheat paradigm. The pig wheat paradigm. Something is off here. You feel like it should be the other way around. Don't you mean the left right paradigm and the pig wheat complex? No. Politics is an inert complex of daily corruption and inane think pieces. The real paradigm is economic and it concerns pig and wheat. This is where the innovation happens. It's only a theory. 
I suspect they're breeding a pig wheat hybrid, probably in Grad. Tell me more about the left-right business. I prefer not to. Both ask the wrong questions. Any spark of light from either one is accidental. Their combined movement's only concern is producing enough pig and wheat for everyone. The end goal of humanity. The original mistake was assuming that words have more being than bodies. That's what led us astray, far from our true lives. But we may yet find a way back. Hmm. Whatever this true life is, you feel it's the real centerpiece of this mythology. What's suspicious about the production of pork and wheat? It's our only shit. We should make better use of not being animals or cereal grain ourselves. What's better about cereal grain? Having enough food could be a precursor for greater things. Yes, having food is means to an end. But the left never talks about the end, only the means. Caps are likewise suckers, constantly sleepless in worry. Does this mean you're mentally ill? Mental illness is a term the powers use to homogenise people. I think I don't reach mental illness. I am merely politically ill. A suspicious element. That was certainly stimulating. I want to ask you about something else now. His eyes flicker. You mentioned true life. What would that be like? The life is true if it's free from fear. An internal division among oneself. And others, mankind has seeds of greatness in it. A germinal will come, a return to trueness. It will be hardcore. How would you go about returning to this true life? Beats and bright lights to shatter falsehoods. Nerve impulses for the collective body. We are very much alike in basic structure. An odd enough beat would awaken everyone to a truer calling. In unity. Unity. Just like that. The speed freak is right in your face. His eyes burning. His comrades look on worriedly. Rejection of the right-left axis. Emphasis on unity. Appreciation of some primordial mode of being. What does that remind you of? Sort of like fascism, then. Nationalism, militarism, racism, an emphasis on a leader character are totally absent in hardcore. The words echo through the church majestically. Fair enough, I'm just making an observation. He picks up a wrench and scratches his head with it, unaroused by fascism. So you're advocating a noise-based society. Many non-Occidental cultures share a beat at their art. Thus, they are closer to true, hardcore life. There's just never been enough of them, and they had to rely on some extremely basic percussion. You keep mentioning hardcore. What does it mean to you? Utmost dedication. Thoughts from the spinal cord. It's a potent superlative as well. The term also signifies certain varieties of pornography that depict penetration, just so you know. Egghead usually has a better concept of the hardcore. He just really likes saying hardcore. <laughs> hardcore! <laughs> his friend shouts from behind his mix table with a smile surpassing your own in wideness, a total moon face and eyes full of naive wonderment. The term hardcore also denotes a strain of pornography that depicts penetration, did you know that? That's a pretty hardcore coincidence, don't you think? Yeah! Yeah, let's change the subject. Oh yeah, sure thing. Ooh, hardened up to your ledger, caught the key, analyzed the beat. Uh, Perikinashianism is love. 42% conceptualization, okay. Hold on a minute. Because uh, we can repeat this and I can increase my conceptualization with some clothing. So let's do that. Um... I always forget which ones are the actual conceptualization items. So forgive me if I genuinely feel the need to have to go through this uh, list of clothes every single time. I do not have, I do not have them memorized on what is what. You'd think glasses would give you some conceptualization. Okay, white satin shirt. 
and this jacket gives us a plus two. Damn. Yo, man, what's on your mind? 72%, let's go. Dedicated, hyperactive, unified. You will have to add something of your own to understand this list of loosely formed qualities called hardcore. You need your own entry. Make it. My own entry. Hard people, hard republic, hard cell, hard party, hard riot, hard government, core membership, core secretary, core teachings, core fighters. Long live the world that gave shape to hardcore to complete itself. A true heir to DeLorean values, three and a half centuries, and the gift still keeps on giving. I've got the money, I've got the place, you've got the figure, you've got the face. Let's get together. We're jumping all over the world. I want to have a fuck with you. It was a call back to that terrible time see the sunshine we ain't stopping keep on dancing till the world ends you know it feels unfair there's a party everywhere i don't seem to have anything to add to the core okay what do you want harry oh i think harry wants to say capital letters he wants to say hardcore till the till the world ends let's get apocalyptic about it if you fear it let it happen. Keep on dancing till the world ends. It gave us a thought. Hardcore aesthetic. Fuck grammar, minus two interfacing. Not only have you internalized the hardcore aesthetic, you've also contributed to it. How hard a core could you possibly become? Lowcore people come around you to correct your typos. It's hardcore here, hardcore there, hard or core in a third instant. What's going on? Those aren't typos, man. That's how core hardness works. If you don't know hardcore from our happy hardcore, what the fuck are we even talking about? Okay, <laughs> so we can really get to the bottom of hardcore. I'll have to think about that one. What's with the clothes, Noid, for our final statement? They're hardcore. That's it? They're just clothes. I thought there would be more to it. Nah, it's just a vest of suspenders made to resemble a human ribcage. Plus some lady clothes to piss off the sex system. Now tell me about that hardcore necktie. <laughs> it's fucking primal. It's my friend and accomplice. It makes me party harder. I can see that. And you've party very hard for a very long time, haven't you? It looks like you're trying to hang yourself. <laughs> so large, too. So many different patterns. It's crazy, man. I like it. It's crazy, man. Respect as a man! <laughs> Take care, Noid. Okay, so we've got a cell to talk to. Uh, we've got to figure out if we can dance with, uh, with Andre. Oh, hey, man. It's good to see you. Dance fever, incoming, higher quality audio, audio aesthetic of anonymous music. Okay, it's at 58% now. It's it's getting higher. Goodbye, officer. I think it's higher. Anyway, I think it was lower before, if I can remember. Um, but what we're going to do is uh, we're going to bring this episode of Disco Elysium to a close because uh, it's it's getting late. So I'm going to I'm going to put a pin in this one, and next time we're going to talk to a cell. Uh, we're going to talk to more people in here. We're going to get soon as uh, soon as equipment sorted out. We're going to see if we can hear anything. Uh, but with this one for now, we have completed the setup. We've got the nightclub moving in, and it is named Disco Elysium. Thank you so much for joining me for today's episode, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>